today I'm going to explore a question that came in, which is a really great one around binge eating and how somatics can help with that. So the good news about this topic is I have a lot of experience with binging. I binged for 15 plus years uh, on lots and lots of processed food to remediate this big uncomfortable sensations of unprocessed childhood trauma, PTSD, anxiety, you name it. And what's interesting about binge eating is because it's always on processed foods or almost always processed foods, the binging itself creates secondary illnesses and syndromes and expressions that then just increase your stress and your anxiety, your depression, your hopelessness. And that's what I went through. I had multiple experiences of sexual assault sexual trauma and relational trauma growing up and the sensations lived in my body in a really big way really big sensations of panic panic attacks anxiety insomnia pressure in my chest fast beating heart these were all the ways these events lived in me because i never spoke them to anybody so i stayed with them kept them close to my chest and was alone with them and that contributed to a physiology of stress Binging was the only thing that allowed me to temporarily soothe and numb out those really unpleasant sensations of anxiety. So I'm going to use a little of my own experience to respond to this great question. The question is, how does one begin to heal a lifetime of binge eating and dependency on processed sugary foods? Processed carbs and sugar is what I want every single day. So what's really fascinating about processed carbohydrates and about very heavy processed foods is they have a stimulating and a depressing effect on our body. So the stimulating effect comes from the way carbohydrates break down into glucose and we have a glucose spike. So our blood sugars raise significantly when we have a lot of processed carbohydrates, especially when those processed carbs like let's say wheat flour are paired with uh, white sugar or really any kind of refined sugar. This will create a spike in glucose levels. And when you have a blood sugar spike, you're going to have an uh, insulin response. So you're gonna have a pancreatic response where insulin is created. The insulin lowers the blood sugar very quickly, which then creates an adrenal response because your liver requires adrenaline to turn stored glucose, known as glycogen, into glucose your body can use again. So that whole process exhausts your body, overwhelms your body, creates inflammation, but more importantly, as we're speaking about binge eating and stress, it creates stress. It creates a chemistry of stress in your body because of the up and down and then the increase in adrenaline. Whenever you have a spike in your adrenaline, your adrenal glands start stimulating and working overtime, you're going to have stress symptoms. You're going to have elevated heart rate, higher blood pressure, your blood vessels constrict, your muscles tense up, and you have much more energy and neurotransmission through the nervous system. Your central nervous system gets stimulated. This is the purpose of adrenaline. It wakes the body up, creates massive amounts of clarity and power so you can outrun a possible threat or fight it off, what we call fight or flight. So eating these refined carbohydrates, especially when they're paired with sugar and all these processed foods and binge eating them, will create this spike, which will create an adrenal response, which will create the very stress that you're trying to mitigate by eating them in the first place. So why would we eat food when we're stressed that's going to stress us out? Well, it doesn't initially stress us out. This is what's fascinating about the body. When you eat, let's say, a bag of potato chips, that was my one of my binge foods of choice, you're getting a lot of carbohydrates, a lot of calories, and a lot of oil and salts, a lot of fat. That extremely dense amount of nutrition, nutrients such as fat and carbohydrates, let's say, is going to initially slow down your body. There's such a high caloric load, so much fat, so many carbohydrates, that your body's energy gets uh, redirected, if you will, to the stomach to start processing this. In that redirection, if you had a bunch of anxiety up here because your blood pressure is very high, it's going to start dropping and come down to your stomach. So you're going to feel that sense of feeling grounded. This is what's powerful about binge eating. It temporarily gives you the sensation of being grounded. It exhausts your body because the processing of these very rich, dense foods is exhausting for your system. So in the exhaustion, we feel a temporary relief. But then, once that food metabolizes, we go back to stress because of that whole 
this cascade of events I spoke about when blood glucose level rises and then drops from insulin and then rises again because of the adrenal response. So in short, the very foods that temporarily slow down our stress response, which we go to emotionally when we're binge eating, will then create another stress response on top of the one that already lives in you. Because binging doesn't get rid of your stress, it temporarily softens and soothes it. But the key word is temporary. And this is why it becomes binging. This is why it becomes a cycle. Because you have a temporary soothing followed by big amount of stress response. And then you need the temporary soothing, then the stress response, and then temporary soothing. So your body's stuck in a cycle of using food to temporarily relax your system and seem like you're grounded. And then it just creates a secondary adrenal response, which then you need more binging to soothe. So you can see how the very thing you're moving for for safety and calm and support is also the thing that just hyper arouses, hyper activates and stresses out your system again later on after it metabolizes. Hey, my friends, I created a space that is affordable, accessible, and anyone is allowed to join anytime. And it's called the library membership. The library membership is an online private platform that hosts dozens of my webinars, my somatic practices, private mini lectures, and movement practices. There's also a monthly sound healing and you'll be invited to a weekly Tuesday live mini practice with me and other participants. You'll also be invited to be a live audience member in our monthly HLN team podcast recordings, where you'll take place in the Q&A that happens off air after the episode is filmed. For more information on this membership, click on the link below or go to holisticlifenavigation.com and click on membership and then library. You can join right now and you can cancel or pause your subscription at any time. I look forward to seeing you in there. The other part that I find really fascinating about this is the relationship between processed carbohydrates and your liver. When you eat a lot of processed carbohydrates, your body can't break down all that glucose and use it properly. It just can't, it's too much. So your body goes through this whole conversion of turning a carbohydrate and a sugar into a fat, which is known as a triglyceride. So think of this as like a waxy coating that starts going around your liver and your muscles. When your liver gets fatty, we refer to this as non-alcoholic fatty liver. That fatty liver, which comes from triglyceride production from excess carbohydrates, it actually becomes less efficient in metabolizing stress hormones in the bloodstream. So one of the jobs of the liver is to metabolize waste and hormones and excess in the bloodstream constantly. So the more efficient it is, the healthier it is, the less fat it has on it, the quicker it will help you lower your stress load simply by pulling out excess adrenaline from your free floating bloodstream. That's really important because if your liver is fatty and it's impaired and it's slow and it's sluggish, it can't do that. So again, you're eating the refined carbohydrates to temporarily soothe and relax your body, which then creates a secondary stress response because of the glucose spike and then creates an inability to even function in metabolizing the stress hormones because your liver is so impacted by the triglycerides, which is a natural body response to too many carbohydrates. So this is the piece that is so important around somatics. You understand the biochemistry I just gave you. The somatic piece is interrupting the craving. It's one of my favorite practices. And I'm going to lead you through it right now. So have a seat and I want you to think of something you're craving unless you're already craving it. In that case, just notice the craving and take a pillow and squeeze it to your belly and your chest and take a breath. Let your head drop back and just be held by the chair and the pillow for a moment. And notice where in your body you feel this craving. Where do you feel the tension? Where do you feel the pressure? Where do you feel the urgency? And sit with that. And give it a minute. And notice what emerges, what emotion is there? What thoughts are there? What events of stress are there? What needs are there? So we'll do a minute right now to some music so you can sit with that and feel what emerges when you sit with the sensation in your body that's driving your craving.
So the question now is, what do you need other than this craving to meet that emotional place inside of you? What support is being required or asked of you to this place you just contacted? Is it looking for joy? Is it looking for a hug? Does it need a stretch? Sometimes it just needs for you to see it's there. This is called interrupting your craving. So you now may go eat the thing. If you're feeling like you still want it, you might notice you eat less. You might eat just as much as usual. Or you might notice a new option emerge for how you can meet the need of this place inside of you that isn't with this particular food or habit. Interrupting the craving is an excellent beginning to starting to understand the unconscious, the roots of my habits, of my cravings, of my binge eating, and connect to those because those unresolved emotions and traumas and events and needs, that's what the food is temporarily soothing and kind of keeping from you. It's like a soundproof between the conversation you can have with you and this part inside of you. So take this, see where it goes. Let me know in the comments, please, because I will use these questions and input and feedback for future videos. And please visit my website holisticlifenavigation.com, where you can view my upcoming events to help you learn how to be with your body in a new way that you might not be used to. Thank you for watching today's episode. Please like and subscribe if you found it useful. And let me know in the comments what you want me to cover next.